So we've got a few weeks left to the election. Lots to think about, lots of ways in which this election might or might not stimulate our innovation economy. Andrew Romans is a serial entrepreneur, big time venture capitalist, and a best selling writer. Wow, three, three things, Andrew. Um, and he has a very global vision of the tech industry. Andrew, welcome to Innovate 2016. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Andrew, you said to me off camera that you thought the only impact of the American election is on the healthcare industry. What do you mean by that? I don't know if it's the only impact. I think that uh, you know, if Trump becomes the president, um, it would probably make things happen faster with Russia. I would view that as the only positive thing. I would view that as mainly negative. I think whenever we have an election, which is every you know, couple of years in the United States, it creates uncertainty of how the healthcare system is going to work in this country. And that makes it hard for healthcare related life science and med tech companies to grow their businesses, especially the med tech side. Um, but that doesn't affect us. We invest in internet software and connected hardware. So uh, we're fairly agnostic to the cycle of a US election. Of course, I'm personally interested, but um, what's more interesting to me on the political landscape is Brexit. Andrew, uh, I had lunch last week with a, a fairly prominent venture capitalist in New York who told me, and he's in a similar space to you, he thinks that if Trump wins the election, the capital markets will essentially shut down. It will be 9-11 all over again because of the uncertainty. Do you not share that concern? Um, I, I try not to allow government risk to mess with my personal life or business too much. Um, I don't think Trump is going to win. I think it's possible, but I... You said it on camera. Yeah, we'll have no, you back, we'll have no, you back I'm, I'm happy in December. To be, I'm happy to be saying this and be wrong, but uh, I don't think he's going to win. Um, if he does, I don't think it's good. Um, but I think that entrepreneurs and VCs should make sure they vote and don't worry too much about that. And let's carry on with our business before and after the election. Andrew, you said before that you, you were more intrigued by Brexit. How does Brexit play out for you as a venture capitalist, as an entrepreneur, as a thinker about the global marketplace? Well, so I, I lived in London for 10 years, and um, I'm flying to London on Sunday. And we're actually hosting an event next Tuesday on the topic of Brexit. We've got a, a huge VC panel where we'll be talking about how Brexit impacts their businesses with each of their specific VC strategies and how that impacts entrepreneurs everywhere. Um, I think that it's generally bad um, for if you're trying to raise a fund, really just when London was getting a critical mass of their, eco, of their ecosystem, um, it's less easy for a startup to move there. And, and so it's not necessarily the Silicon Valley of all of Europe as much as it was absent Brexit. So, it's a negative thing, I would say. And I think even, I, met, I had lunch with the American ambassador to the EU recently, and he was saying it's in our interest as Americans to have a strong, stable Europe. Um, so it's not positive, but you know there are opportunities for these other places like Dublin, Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin, Stockholm um, should to Silicon potentially Va benefit. Andrew, should Silicon Valley be worried about that? Should we be worried about the rise of the rest, the rise of Berlin and Amsterdam and Helsinki and Stockholm, let alone Beijing and Shanghai and Hong Kong and Singapore? Uh, no, and I, 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 you know, I'm not one to worry about this stuff. I'm one to seek opportunities. And um, you know, if there's some stupid regulation, then there's probably a financial opportunity for an entrepreneur to make a business around it. I think that a strong, developed ecosystem in Beijing, Shenzhen, China, Chengdu, Chongqing, all these places in China is very positive for American, European, Israeli, Russian, Indian entrepreneurs to, to open operations there. There's an imbalance of supply and demand of too much money chasing too few deals with government support for these empty ghost buildings that have been made, like kind of a la Skolkovo over in China. And um, there's opportunities to raise money from Chinese LPs there's opportunities to invest in US or other startups and help them move operations to China, manufacture software, hardware, sell into the China market with huge R&B funds to fund it at high 
inflated valuations over there. So it's all good um, as far as I'm concerned. The same with um, the more Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin, Stockholm, London evolve as, e as uh, startup venture ecosystems, the better, the better things get. Andrew, is there anything you want from this election? Should we just want government to stay out of digital affairs when it comes to something, say, like network neutrality? Do we need more or less government? Um, I think it would be useful to uh, unshackle some of the immigration laws that we have. So there's quite a few specific things I would like to lobby for when it comes to the government. But most of all, I would like the government to stop selling themselves to the highest bidder. I think that America... When does that is, happen? Give me an example. America's legally corrupt. You can buy a senator, you can buy a politician with no limits. And that's wrong. So How I does think, that affect technology, though? Are, are companies buying senators and yeah, presidents? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it affects you like um, uh, where I live in the middle of the Silicon Valley. You basically have Comcast has got a monopoly, and Comcast buys the politician, and there's no effective deregulation. In the UK, with Margaret Thatcher, we had proper deregulation in the telecommunications industry. But I don't want to go off on a rant about that. I think that in 2016, entrepreneurs have an opportunity to disrupt lots of large businesses. There's never been such an evolved ecosystem as we have here in the Silicon Valley. It's number one most evolved ecosystem. You got young people who sell their companies and get super rich overnight. They go to parties in San Francisco. They put big money into their buddy's company. You've got seed funding. You've got institutionalized pre-seed with LPs backing checks into a company that's just an idea. You got a funder for every step of the, of the stage, all the way to growth. You don't have growth in Europe. There's no growth money other than maybe index. And if you don't get along with those guys, what are you, where else are you going to go? There's a little bit of institutionalized A. But we've got the most evolved ecosystem. I think the whole world can move here and benefit from being part of this ecosystem and benefit from going back and forth to these other ones and disrupt large businesses. I think large companies should be careful. They're about to get disrupted because it's so easy and cheap to launch a startup that they should be on offense and defense with what's going on with startups. So I encourage corporations to get involved in our little disco. And they should be investing in my VC fund and other VC funds and get access to this external innovation. If you think the next big idea is going to come from inside of your R&D lab at Hewlett Packard, you're, you're, you're badly wrong. The startups are happening here and all over the place. So I think it's a great time to be an entrepreneur. I frankly don't really worry too much about the, how the election is going to impact that. And I hope Hillary Clinton is the next president.